you may know about this bottle. This is uh, my current celebration whiskey. Got it out again to celebrate the arrival of my second son. It's fantastic stuff. Both my, uh, my wife and my son are doing really well. Building those positive connotations around a whiskey is a fantastic way to celebrate a bottle, celebrate occasions. So cheers. So the world is going slightly mad recently. The price of whiskey, good scotch in particular, is going mental. And I bought a pair of bottles um, out of frustration uh, recently, or in frustration. I kept an eye out for these. The idea of the sherry cask matured and the port cask matured, um, cask strength from Kilcarra and Springbank. They really appealed to me. Um, and from what I've tried before of this similar style of whiskey, I wanted one of each and I kept a close eye on retailers, on Facebook groups, you name it. I didn't manage to pick them up at retail, so I took to auction sites. And in my frustration, I paid a reasonable markup, a frustrating markup, plus fees over retail. I don't currently regret it, and I think when I actually taste them, I'm not gonna regret it either. But this kind of artificial inflation that we're bringing on ourselves got me thinking. Where is the value? What whiskies are available at the minute or distilleries are knocking about that are bringing us good product at a sensible price point that warrants the product that you actually receive, the whiskey and the enjoyment that you get out of that whiskey. So I thought I'd put together a little list of the whiskies that I think are worth talking about, worth seeking out and at a sensible price point at the moment. So I'd best get these guys out of the way. So the first whiskey producer that came to mind is probably not gonna surprise anyone, Distel. Distel as a group have um, a quite a nice policy on their whiskey presentation, natural color, 46.3%, neon chill filtration, and they own three distilleries in Scotland, um, which being a breadth of different styles of whiskey. Um, the first that I'm gonna talk about is Deanston, which just do unpeated. They are typically um, spirit driven, ex bourbon -y style of whiskies. They do a lot of interesting cask finishes, but their core range is primarily on the ex bourbon and letting the spirit shine, a nice waxy spirit. So they do a 12 year old and a virgin oak, which are very easy to get your hands on. Both of them are about the same price point around the 30 pound mark. I prefer the 12 year old. The virgin oak is on the sweeter, more puddingy side of things. This is slightly more complex, slightly more refined, the 12 year old. And they have an 18 year old. This 18 year old is um, remarkably good value for money. I picked this bottle up for £57. Um, for an 18 year old, that is incredible. There's you know, other distilleries, hell, even one of the other distill distilleries is 120 pound per bottle. So £57 for an 18 year old whiskey is really good going. And it's not just because the stuff doesn't stack up. This is a really good whiskey. Next one is Bunnerhaven, another distel distillery. This is in contrast to the Deanston. It's kind of got a lot more of the cask influence coming through and defining the whiskey. Bunnerhaven is still a very nice spirit. It's on the fruitier side of things. Um, some of that coastal tone coming through from Isla and being on the coast. But um, the Bunnerhaven, most of their expressions are um, heavily cask influenced like this steward for example um, it's young bold brash with a lot of sherry influence that one sets me back about 26 pound a bottle can find that in supermarkets near me fairly easily the 12 year old if you haven't tried it it's it's absolutely one to add to your list of things to buy this is a lovely, refined, um, magical whiskey. A lot of people start their journey with this one because it's where they kind of latch onto the fact that there's something special about scotch or about whiskey. This one about 35 pound, 30 if you're lucky, I think. Next one is Le Chague. Now Le Chague is the peated version of the Tobermory spirit. Tobermory being a distillery over on the Isle of Mull. The Tobermory spirit is again, it's a nice integrity whiskey. Um, but the spirit has a bit more boldness, a bit brash. It's got nice uh, coastal undertones. This being a peated whiskey, and it's it's quite peaty, um, it's a nice alternative to some Isla whiskies with plenty of that coastal tone coming through. So you've got 10 year old, which sets you back about 35 pound as an alternative to Isla. That's a really strong offering, but they also do some interesting whiskies like this Sinclair series. 
This one is a Rioja Barrique matured whiskey. And again, another strong 18 year old offering. I think this 18 year old set me back about 75 pound. Really looking forward to, I've never actually tried this one, but I have tried other Lachegue and I think this is gonna be a really nice uh, expression, really nice continuation. Now, whilst we're talking Island distilleries, it's worth mentioning Aaron or the Locranda distillery. Aaron is a brand um, which is really flourishing at the minute. They're bringing a lot of good whiskey to market. The 10 year old, I probably don't need to praise any more than it already has been recently. This is available about 36 pound. But they also have some interesting peated expressions and things like the uh, Sherry Bodega, which is about £50 for uh, heavier ABV, heavy cask influence, sherry influence. All quality whiskey, made well and made to be enjoyed. Loch Lomond next. This is an interesting distillery and interest and intrigue is what makes this one stand out to me. Unfortunately, it's a distillery that I have reached past a bunch of times. This expression, for example, is very readily available over here in supermarkets. Uh, £22.50, I think I paid for this one. It's the peated um, single grain Scotch whiskey. It's only called a single grain because of the use of a coffee still. Loch Lomond have some weird and interesting equipment available to them, and that means that not everything can be labelled single malt. It's all barley, but it's gone through a coffee still. That is a lovely expression with a nice peaty pang to it um, for a really good price point. Really enjoy that one. Um, they also do a bunch of age statements uh, under a few different names. This one is the Inch Murin. Um, that is a beautiful access point. Um, it's rich, it's deep, um, and it's again intriguing. It's one of those where every time I come to it, I find something slightly different, something more to explore. They do a couple of other 12 year olds. The Inch Moan, I think it is, is the peated version. Um, this glass house is another example of them not being able to label things um, as you might expect. So it's, it's uh, branded or labeled as being blended for highballs, but they also say it's all made in one distillery and it's all barley but it's a blended scotch. I think that's because part of it has to be labeled grain and part of it is barley, so they have to label it blend. I don't know. It's messy, but the whiskey itself is very, very drinkable, and this bottle cost me about 20 pound. Really, really nice whiskey for what you pay for. But then they do do some stuff on the more um, premium or interesting end of the scale, like the 18 year old, although that only sent me back 60 pound. Um, some single casks, some weird expressions for different clubs, uh, whiskey clubs, shops, you name it. So Loch Lomond is a distillery that I think is well worth exploring. As far as I'm concerned, they haven't missed the mark yet. I haven't tried one of their whiskies or bought one of their whiskies, which I haven't enjoyed. So worth looking out for. Made by hand for genuine character, it's Ben Romack next. This is a distillery that I have a genuine fondness for. Um, I haven't tried anything from them, again, that I've been disappointed by. They do do a core range, starts with the 10 year old, which will set you back about 30, 33 pound. But I've seen it get as low as 24 pound, and at 24 pound it's an absolute steal. 30 pound is good value, 24 pound it's, it's really good value. Um, but the issue, the thing that sets some people off with their age statements is the lower ABV. Doesn't really grate with me, I still thoroughly enjoy it. But they do a couple of other things um, which are regularly available which tick a bunch of boxes. Like the contrast range, this is an interesting series of experiments if you like. There's heavily peated, heavily peated plus sherry, organic and Cara gold malt. These are all whiskies that I'm looking forward to cracking open and comparing and contrasting side by side. But where the real money is, though those are about £45 each, where the real interest or the real thing to look out for is for me is this vintage uh, cask strength series. This is batch 4, 57.2%. These will set you back about £50 a bottle, but they are all fantastic, interesting, rich, deep, complex. And as with any cask strength whiskey, you get multiple levels. You can sit there, spend an evening on the same bottle and just adding touch of water to see what else develops, what else you get to explore. So a lot of value to be had from these bottles. 
Now, unfortunately, the Isla name comes with a bit of a premium. Marketing teams have got hold of the fact it's synonymous with scotch, with smoke, with all of these characteristics, which uh, a lot of people uh, seek out. And so they flaunt it and put a markup on it. There is one bottle, the Ardbeg 10, which a lot of people um, tend to tend to hold as a, a guardian of Isla because it holds true with a particular quality and enjoyment, but also with their price. At about £40 a bottle, the Ardbeg 10 is fantastic. De uh, deep, rich, smoky, really good whiskey. They do also, I haven't yet got around to opening my bottle, but they do this Wee Beastie, which is a slight bit cheaper at £35, but it comes at a higher ABV and five years old, some people are gonna go, oh, young whiskey, blah, blah, blah. Young with peat actually comes with some benefits because the, um, the smokiness tends to drop off over time. So if you have a younger whiskey, the smokiness should be bolder. But I happen to think there is another guardian of Isla, the Lafroig Quarter Cask, 48%. Um, again, it's slightly younger, I think it's about an 80 year old whiskey, but the end of the maturation is done in quarter casks. The smaller cask means more interaction with the wood, which therefore gives you um, some bolder flavours. This is not just peaty, but it's a bit peppery, charred, um, with some really nice depth to the character, to the flavours. So this is uh, £29, really, really fantastic value for money. And worth mentioning because Lagavulin is going mad with the 16 year old recently, hiked up to about 75, 80 pound a bottle. This eight year old you can find over here for about 35, 38 pound a bottle. I tend to find it to be a little bit more on the softer, um, subtler, cleaner side of things, sweeter maybe. This is still a good representation of Lagavulin, but it's not quite got the magic of the 16 year old. Probably one of my best tips is to look outside of the norm, look at the independent bottlers and look at the whiskey retailers who commission their own uh, bottlings. Because these guys don't have to worry about the brand recognition or the consistency, batch variance, that kind of thing, they always tend to bring something interesting, something with intrigue that engages with me a little bit more, if I'm honest. Um, this also leads to them being uh, priced a little more aggressively because they have to stand out to win the sales. They have to draw people away from the brand names and towards the uh, question mark, the, the dubious. But if you take, for example, these decent age statements, cask strengths, they set me back about 30, 35 pound a bottle. Super value for money um, and everything I've heard about these specific bottles has been positive. Finally, it's only right to circle back to where this thought train began, Campbelltown, but the other side of Campbelltown, not Springbank, Longrow, Kilkerran, but Glen Scotia. Now these guys also make a fantastic whiskey, non-chill filtered, decent ABV, but they don't quite have the brand recognition that Springbank currently does, so you can find it and it's at a reasonable price point. Like this, double cask expression, um, this is very sweet, lovely, interesting, but with a savory layer, some oddities behind it. This set me back about 36 pound, 35 pound a bottle, something like that. Great entry point, really enjoyable if no age statement doesn't bug you. Then we also have the Victoriana. This is a batch release. Um, this specific, specific one is 54.2% cask strength. There's some variation between them, but they all seem to be driving towards um, an interesting expression of whiskey, an interesting experience. So this set you back about 65 pound a bottle, I think. Well worth it, really, really interesting whiskey. Then we've got some strong age statements like this 18 year old. Um, that is again, good ABV, non-chill filtered. Set you back about 85 pound. But can you imagine a Campbelltown special limited release coming out at only £55 a bottle and not disappearing off of the uh, online retailers within a minute of it hitting them? This is an eight year old peated Pedro Jimenez cask finish, non chill filtered, cask strength, cask strength eight year old Campbelltown for £55. I am all about that. 
So there you go, there's my quick rundown of whiskies that I think are flying under the radar just enough that they're easy to find, yet still offer plenty of value for money, plenty of enjoyment to anyone who would pick them up. So thanks for watching guys, and I hope to catch you in the next one. Cheers.